Imagine if um, six to eight weeks ago you knew nothing at all about this and now you're asked to sell it. We've had to go through that journey basically from nothing to pretty much putting it on the table to clients, trying to show them in meeting rooms. Um, and so this is sort of the, the problems that we went through. I'll give you a little bit about our background. Um, my name's Tom. Um, I'm uh, what they call the Director of Innovation at a company called click to view which is a content marketing agency with a full production arm. Um, Matt, who are you? Uh, my name is Mike Edwards. I am the new business development person at click to view so I'm responsible for selling this into organisations. Uh, my background is in production back in the UK, and I've been here about three months, so I'm still officially fresh off the boat. Wow. It's, oh, it's a bit dark. Mm. That's better. Right. And the, the reason we wanted to get into 360, we obviously we, we like the idea of virtual reality, we like, like the idea of, of sort of 360, because we thought anybody that's got a space, be it indoors or outdoors, as long as it's reasonable, you know, be it real estate, whatever. So I thought, well, this is a great opportunity for us to try and go for. We've had to learn how to do it. So um, the first um, thing that Matt's going to talk about is some of the issues that we've had with hardware. Not all successful. Right, so we, we, we've trialled loads of different pieces of hardware. We started off initially with the Rico Theta. We had version 1 and version 2. I think version 3 is not available commercially. Um, and what we found was that the quality of it was very good. Um, it, the software stitched all the 360 together quite easily. The problem that we had was that the quality wasn't high enough that we found we could commercialise. So we went back to the drawing board, looked at other pieces of uh, hardware kit, we looked at some of the Kodak stuff, um, but we ended up settling on um, a 6 GoPro rig, which we use with um, something called an Explorer, which is the, the sort of module that holds all the cameras. Um, we found that that gave us the best uh, in terms of flexibility, high um, video quality output. Uh, if we actually run them at uh, 2.7K, we can actually output around 8K. So from a future proofing perspective, the stuff looks really good, it looks really, really sharp. Um, the problem that we've had is not necessarily with the hardware, it's been more around the software. I mean, do you want to just talk about some of the trials and tribulations well, that we've had? The problem with the software that I found is that, and, and this may be the case for all of you, I mean, some of you may be developers who develop your own software, but we've basically been using off-the-shelf off solutions. Um, from my perspective, the biggest thing we were trying to do was deliver it to a client. I wanted to go into a meeting room and say, look at this, and go, wow, and basically there's me at the moment with a cardboard, something on YouTube, playing in a, in a well, I don't even know what the name of the, the app was. I've got about eight different apps on here that I tried. And it basically comes out and it's compressed and it's grainy and they're still going, whoa, but I thought, well, this just isn't good enough. Um, and there's me with a hangover and a dreadful headache trying to go through every different type of 360 stuff, blurred and it's all off the thing and, you know, and walking around the office with the Oculus headset on, falling over, trying to sort this out. And we just, I thought, how are we going to get this in a way that we can deliver it? So well, the first problem we've had is that most of the software we've discovered is really flaky, really bad operating systems, um, you know, just not set up to just do this, film it put it on a thing and take it to a client. So that's the first problem. Matt's been working with the on-PC software, which I think has been just about as bad. I mean, everything that we've tried um, has failed at some point. The problem that you've got is that depending on how you're actually going to use the footage, if you're going to use it in an app, if you're going to use it within a web browser, if you're going to serve it to the end client, that all actually has quite a big impact in terms of how you film it, frame rate, um, output quality, audio quality. Uh, I think the biggest issue I think that we have had is that from a workflow perspective, that one of the biggest pain points that we've had is that if, for example, one of the GoPros, we, we use six GoPros and they're all synced together on a single remote, we trigger all six of them at the same time. Yeah, but then one of them just... They're all, they're all together. Yeah, so, so what we do is we, we pair all of them on the same remote and then we trigger it from the same remote. Um, some of the problems that we've had in the past is one's not triggered for whatever reason. Uh, and the biggest, the biggest issue that we do have is that you only realise there's a problem by the time you've reached the end of the workflow. And if you're hiring the GoPros, and if you're hiring all of the kit, you're finding out there's been a problem about eight hours later. So when, you like me and Tom, when we're delivering for clients, that can sometimes lead to all sorts of problems in terms of managing people's expectations. And part of that is because the technology is so nascent. Well, the problem we have is that we're on a very tight budget. Being the innovation director sounds glamorous, but actually it's like being in a shed with a few crappy things and hardly any money. So it's like, uh, we're going to need the GoPros, we're going to rent them for a day and a half. 
it's got to work. And like I say, go that, I've been up on the Pinnacle, I'm down in Sentosa, I'm, like, I'm down by the Malayan, I'm filming all over the place. I come back, we sit down, we're in the office drinking beer till about three o'clock in the morning and suddenly we just go, shit, it's not worked. You know? And this has happened three times. Uh, <clears throat> but that's fine, that's fine. You know, you learn from your mistakes. I mean, another thing, for example, is we were trying, we've been through every YouTube tutorial there is on this stuff, and we were trying to find the settings for the camera. Couldn't find it anywhere. Went out, shot a load of stuff. With a client, I'd like to point out, came back, it done a bit work because the settings are wrong. And you had to actually get in touch with your mate in Australia who runs a company doing this. And he went, oh no, no, you've got to, got to change this, change that. And we're like, oh my God. So what, what we're trying to point out is that although there's lots of fantastic technology out there, when you get to a point where you're actually trying to deliver it to a client, you are presented with massive challenges unless you've been doing this for years. And loads of companies are going to be running into these problems, I'm sure. You know, oh, it's fine, I'll buy the cameras, I'll just film it, I'll go out and do it. I mean, just rendering the, the, the film took about three and a half hours per film. I mean, the difficulty that you've got is that you've essentially got six cameras, all with footage which is 4K, which you've then got a catalog, archive on a machine, you need an extremely fast PC or Mac, you need extremely fast storage, uh, we've used a, 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 like a Thunderbolt 2 RAID and that sort of can sort of keep up with the requirements but even on a pretty decent spec, you know, like an i7 uh, quad-core processor with a decent graphics card, it's still really slow, it's a bit of a case of you set it to go and then you have to go and go out, go out and have a meal or, or go sob in the corner which is what we normally do. Um, but again, when you actually get to the point where the output is very good, it, it's all worth it. And we've, I mean, we've been in a number of situations where we've demoed it for a client, we've done test filming to sort of use as a proof of concept, and uh, I mean, we can't say the name of the hotel chain, but we're working with a very large hotel chain, and we actually did some test filming, and we were trying to explain the concept, and he couldn't really get his head around it, so we showed him a pool party that had been filmed at one of his hotels. With a lot of extremely attractive girls, I'd like to point out, which is a great sell point. Well, yeah, well, it is to a red-blooded Frenchman. It is, and, yeah. uh, <laughs> and immediately, he just got the concept, and that was pretty much our foot in the door to sort of sell it you know, wider throughout the entire group. But, I mean, there's other sort of challenges as well in terms of, one of the things that we're finding is, you know, we're not, uh, we're not developers, we're not app builders, <laughs> We're not into running Unity engine, that's all way beyond us. So one of the things that we have to look at is in terms of how we can get the footage looking at its best, so in terms of things like color correction, things that sort of suit our production background, even things like text, you'll notice on a lot of these 360s, the text is still very basic, because in an effort to get the text in a more sophisticated format, you effectively have to then put the software into like a plugin like Blender, um, create a 4D environment and then ensure that the text is right and this is all additional workflow. And one of the other things that we sort of found is right here, right now, I think you, you don't need to be that sophisticated to get that well in fact. I think there's a lot of clients, I think if the footage is good, if it's good quality, if your blend is good, if there's not these obvious, um, you know, blend lines where, you know, where one camera's merging with another, if you can overcome some of those challenges, I think people are pretty much solved. And the other interesting thing that we discovered is we really wanted to focus on video because um, we went to a meeting with a client and he had literally just had someone there before, probably someone in this room, I hope not, um, who had a, a, a one of these cameras from Google, and the static ones that really, you know, he was showing them all the things that he'd been doing. And, and we said, we thought, oh God, you know, we're gonna brat out of our league here. But we showed him our one and he said, oh, it's moving and it's got sound. And he was blown away by the fact that there was movement and there was sound. And I said, you know, we could come down to your hotel and shoot it in the evening when the lights are going down and everyone's talking and the music's playing and the cicadas are doing whatever cicadas do. And, um, and just and, and capture, the, what, and capture the personality of the place. And he was just, that was the thing that blew him away. He was like, oh my God, it's moving. I said, yeah, and, and you can then you know, go to another room and you can move around there. And you can, you know, when you're inside a room, you can see the light coming in the window and those things. And, and that was, for, it was a selling point for him. It was a selling point for us. And which is why we're going through this pain to do video and not just static. Because I've seen some beautiful static um, um, stuff done in rooms with some wonderful you know, graphics that pop up and you look at them and things. But for me, it's just a picture. You know, it's got to move. And, and that's why the, sh the shoots I've been doing, I've been going down, standing next to Lao Pao Sat, almost dropping the camera into the street under a taxi. Um, but thousands of people moving around me and stuff, and it really brings it to life. So video is definitely the way forward. The clients are, are really loving it. And well, that's pretty much um, it, I think. Just wanted to basically show you what it's like on the ground at the front line trying to sell this stuff. Um, 
I've got a stuff written down here, but I can't uh, think what we said. So there you go. I don't know if anyone's got any questions at all in terms of if anybody else in a similar situation, if there's anything you wanted to ask us. Do you think we can ask anybody who is on a similar journey? We're all up for sharing our, uh, our pain and experiences. Yeah, anybody want to help us get this right? <laughs> okay. Help Raise your hand. Help us, Creators. Yeah, I mean, it's. So we'll, we'll throw cards at you afterwards. We've got plenty of business cards. And, uh, <clears throat> well, thanks, guys. It sounds. Do you think what's going to happen in the future? Is it going to get easier? Well, yeah, obviously. How far will we away in about another year from now? What do you I expect? think in five years' time, it's just going to be sunglasses and they'll just be walking around and they'll be, you know, everyone's going to be used to it. I mean, there's a fairly small window for this to really make a lot of money, I think, because people are. It's coming out in small directions. We're getting more and more links to amazing things. We've already seen a couple of big hotel chains which have started doing it already. Um, so it's just getting in there and being an early adopter in Singapore, which is what we're trying to do. Um, and the technology, as Matt was saying, it's about that workflow. It's about knowing, you know, making the mistakes, learning from them, which is what we seem to be doing at the moment. Um, and just having that, delivering something quickly. I want to be able to go to a client. I filmed this last week. Here it is this week. I don't want an eight week or a 12 week or a you know, three month line down the line. I want to show it to you next week. Go into your meeting. Here's the first room. Do you want us to do the rest? You know, that kind of, well, okay, let's do it. That's where it's going to go. It's about speed of delivery. And it's also about, you know, it isn't actually, well, we should have said, it's not actually as expensive as some people think. So I think there's a quite good price point on this as well. But, but right now, technology limitations, that's pretty much it. The there's, software there's, limitations. There's two really good pieces of hardware which are due to land sort of any that soon. One is Nokia bringing out a camera, which I think, I can't remember if it's eight lenses or it may even be more than that. With the Osmo, that looks really impressive. The one that's probably interested me more is there is um, a company called Lytro. I don't know if anyone's heard of Lytro. And Lytro have this really innovative camera that currently what it does is it, re it records um, light information. So you can refocus a still image. They've actually developed that so it, it, it looks like a spaceship on a stick. Uh, but what it actually does is not only does it take uh, full 360 uh, image, it also scans in a 4D environment and it maps the two things together instantaneously. Although we've been told it's going to be about 800,000. I was going to say. Yes, <laughs> but it, it looks like a fantastic kit. Okay. And the, the important thing there is that it comes with its own server yeah. and the, the, the um, footage is ready in about two yeah. hours. So you're getting rendering, you're getting all the yeah. charges. Yeah, I think for big boys that's, that's yeah. the way to go. For us it's, it's more about getting a proper workflow, getting people trained up, you know, so you can just do it as quickly as possible and deliver it to the client. Cool. All right. Thank you, guys. Can we give them a hand? Thank you. Thank you.